Hello, my lovelies. How are you doing today? I am wonderful and I'm sure you are too. Thank you for joining me on the I Am Maggie Love channel and I Am Maggie. Peace in, peace out. Anyway, I want to thank you for joining me on this journey. We are doing a slow crawl through the magic of everyday life with Maria Zepes. Okay, we are in chapter nine digging through these beautiful words of hope that are going to bring a lot of us into much better places within our lives. Okay, fine if you're already having a great life, they'll give you more tools to help others on their journeys. Okay, so controlling our emotional world. Ready? So we're getting back. Okay, here we go. We must realize that the poisonous fruits of our fate all develop from seeds we cast. So we were talking about that yesterday. Um, the seeds, either somebody can plant a seed within us, it's not good. We can plant seeds within ourselves. So of course we're going to make sure they're the very best, highest, spiritually organic, wonderful fruit and vegetable, spiritually bearing everything. We, you know what I'm saying? It's going to go up, it's going to go down, it's going to go to left, and it's going to go to right, and it's going to be all-encompassing wonderfulness. So, the unconscious and the conscience, preg impregnators, the illeg illegitimate parents of the furies of actions in our stories are indeed ourselves. So, did you get that? The unconscious, so unconscious, not aware, and conscious, so conscious impregnators. So, some of us are unconscious. Let's say unconscious. We um, are not aware that we are being programmed by certain music and videos. So that program is just going right into the unconscious. It's affecting behavior. It's affecting life. It's affecting what we think we can have, but we have no idea. Or we were little kids, little templates. We are being programmed to the age of seven. I think it's, I think that's the hardcore motherboard, but I also know that it goes on and especially as it's conditioned. Then we look at conscious impregnators. So let's say that we are making choices to do things that we know are less than good for our mind body spirit soul so we have these these abilities to know the so they are illegitimate parents right so nobody knows who they are sometimes of the furies of actions in our stories and they are indeed ourselves right so this becomes who we become so like you know there is a quote out there, what one a man thinketh is what he becomes. In business, um, they tell you, look at the five closest people who are near you because that's where you're going with your life. So I'm going to just tell you right now, little tip, if you are doing a check, check, check on your life and you are looking around and starting to realize that what you are surrounded with is not where you want your life going, please uh, make a shift. Okay, it is only possible to grab, change, or direct fate at the moment of conception when an act conceived in darkness and negativity takes place. Drifting into some unrealistic relationship, establishing blind dependence on a person or a situation, establishing blind confidence, destroying the barriers to self-control, the evil seed is impregnated, comes to life, and runs it on its own course like a boomerang hurled away. It comes back to its source, which is ourselves. So let's do that one again. Woo -hoo. If we had special effects. So I've got my Wonder Woman shirt on today because we are all some type of superhero. And uh, if this was a superhero movie, boy, this would be, you know, what the guy, the bad guys would be, as my grandson would say, what the bad guys are trying to do, the good guys. But here we go. When an act conceived in darkness and negativity takes place, so that could be abuse, trauma, or that could be, a, you know, unkindness towards oneself. Drifting into some, so examples are drifting into some unrealistic relationship, so putting others on pedestals, not doing our inner work, you know, so that brings in riffraff. Destroying the barriers of, oh, establishing blind dependence on a person or situation, right? Codependence. 
because we want to be independent and we want to be interacting. We do not want to have this blind dependence on a person or situation because then that happens. That person and that situation controls us. Destroying the barriers to self-control. So things that we, actions we take ourselves, or even when somebody, when you say no to somebody and they continue to uh, violate your boundaries, um, that is an, a form of destroying the barriers to one's self-control. Because then one doesn't learn how to uh, say no or exhibit their self-control. Now, I'm not here to blame. I really think we got to... Um, even though however tough things are, we need to take responsibility because that's the way we're going to come out. That's the way we're going to come out, the phoenix. The evil seed is impregnated. It comes to life. Oh, wait, I'm going to go back and say one more thing. Destroying the barriers to self-control. So also, too, if we're doing things that we know are not healthy for us, you know, drinking to blackout, taking drugs, hanging around with people that we know are going to consistently continue to put us in a bad place yeah those things wear down the self-control of oneself um, okay so the evil seed is impregnated right so the baby's there the moment of conception and it comes to life and runs its own course like i was saying those loops don't they don't have to do anything at that point nobody has to do anything to somebody at that point because that person's going to run that program and torture themselves and and it's very, very hard when you've been through abuse and trauma and difficult situations uh, because there is, you know, the universe has a way of, you know, God has a way of leveling the field. So you have to get out of that regretting uh, painful place because it's not serving you. I, I, if you would please look at whatever it is you're regretting, crying about, or in depression and things, if you really be honest with yourself, you'll see that those behaviors are not helping you. And I want to help you. I want to see you get off the floor. I want to see you get off the dirt. Wherever you are in the world listening to this, um, we have different levels of socioeconomic status with people. Some people are sleeping on the floor of dirt. Some people are on in water and trenches. Some people are, please, whoever you are, continue to reach higher because God and the universe is here to support you. Okay. So it'll come to life, run its own course, and like a boomerang hurled away. Pew, 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 pew. So boomerang away, pew, and boomerang comes back, right? Comes back to its source, which is ourselves, okay? So if we, when we start looking around where, where things are coming back to us, don't look around, look within. Let's try to see what's going on. We should always treat our feelings with the same respect we would give to poisons and antidotes, which similarly we would not allow into our system without carefully monitored and measured doses. So nowadays, the modern world is if anything's wrong, take a pill, take a pill, take a pill. And slowly by slowly, information comes out. Oh, this one causes cancer. Oh, this one causes cancer. Oh, this one destroys the brain, etc., etc. Let's really put ourselves, realize that this is a temple of God and that we want to look at what we're putting in and what's coming out, guys, and we want to like look at monitoring ourselves and looking at these measured doses. Now, I'm not saying don't have fun. Don't enjoy. Jesus liked the party. Jesus hung around uh, tax collectors and parties and people who were drinking and things, but Jesus was full of the Spirit of God, and so he was drunk on the Spirit, and so we're going to get ourselves to a place where we are also that way as well. We won't need outside sources. Okay, a sane person would never think of drinking vitriol, yet they may fill their soul to the brim with mordant hatred. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. They turn yellow, stiffen, and go into spasms from it, and do not think that they are committing the most destructive auto-toxification which ultimately wrecks their nervous system, stomach, liver, gall, and kidneys, just the same as if they had physically ingested some deadly medicine. Okay, I'm not sure if you got this. Well, I'm not saying you don't get this because you can just go bing, bing, bing on YouTube. But this is not talking about, you know, drinking jet fuel or some other poison that may be in your water. 
PFAS and PFOLs or whatever. This is talking about when somebody is filled with hatred, this vitriol of hatred. This is an emotion, right? Jealousy. So I want you to think of somebody, even yourself, if you can be that honest, of a time that you were filled with hatred and how it affected you. Did it make your heart beat beautifully? Did your nails grow long? Did your skin look vibrant? Well, in this case, they're talking about this person well, is drinking hatred. And they are filled to the brim with this hatred. And they turn yellow, stiffen, go into spasms from it, and do not think that they are committing the most destructive auto-toxication. So we often think we are hurting, we are hurting the other person because we hate XYZ and we hate blah, blah, blah. And the truth is we are drinking the poison. Don't drink the poison. If, even if you're thirsty, don't drink the poison. There's a great girl that puts up videos on, I'm sorry, I don't know her name, but it's on dating and she says, hey, even if you're thirsty, don't drink the poison. I would like to say that here too. Even if you're thirsty, don't drink the poison of hatred, jealousy, anger, shame. Because it's you're, you're toxifying yourself. And it ultimately will ruin and wreck a nervous system, a stomach, a liver, a gallbladder, kidneys. It'll ruin anything, guys. Anything that it comes into the path. Okay? So we are all going to self-evaluate and see in which ways that maybe we need to clear ourselves of lower emotions, hatred, anger, as such. And don't drink the poison, even if you're thirsty. Every poison, however, has its counter poison, as have evil, dark, disease-causing reflections, their own antidote or neutral equalizer. So this is part of why I'm doing this slow crawl through the book. Because if anybody's trapped in a hell realm of any types of sorts, and there is a part of their healing that needs to come from their mind upgrade and their heart upgrading and then their body upgrading, I'm just wanting to encourage you. It is all possible. All things are possible through Christ. All things are possible. The universe has got our back. All things are possible. Okay, so every poison, however, has its counterpoison, as have evil, dark, disease-causing feelings, their own antidote or neutral equalizer. The medicine for someone drained by sorrow, melancholy, or self-absorbed obsession is cheerfulness. The magic of love expels hatred from someone possessed by it. The magic of love. Have you ever seen people in life going along, life sucks, things are wrong, and then they meet someone. And, okay, for whatever reasons, you know, but that person loves them. And you just watch that person go from a dying whatever to all of a sudden a blooming flat rose blooming flower of some sort a blooming vegetable or fruit of some sort in the middle of a desert because love did that okay so that's possible for all of us and of course the more that we love ourselves the more we can attract other loving positive good people into our lives so crying can be retuned through laughter and turning our attention to a neutral topic okay guys so Crying can be retuned to laughter. Um, Norman Cousins, look him up. He had cancer. And he locked himself in a room and watched funny movies. And he made sure that he kept happy and joyful and laughing. And he literally, like, got rid of his cancer. So laughter. You know, there's a laughter yoga. There's also laughter praised moves. But just, you don't need a reason to laugh. If somebody is laughing and you see them, okay, there's the mirror neurons. Mirrors that, uh, neurons that fire together, wire together. But also when you mirror, when you see a person do something, you are going to do something. Well, laugh, laugh. Because a lot of times when you do see someone laughing, it makes you laugh too. 
and you don't need a joke or anything to laugh. It's free. So just find a reason to laugh and laugh. It's such the best feeling. And get it in the gut. I mean, if you can get that laughter all the way down to the gut, into the you know, base of your chakras, oh boy, tingle, tingle, the body's going to be happy. Personal injury heals exceptionally well as a result of establishment, establishing impersonal values, the inspiring, dissolving light of higher ideals in which our momentary being contracts and what is external and invulnerable grows substantially within us. Oh, that's so beautiful. So in that moment, in it, when one is injured, um, the dissolving light of higher ideals, when we use these tools, right, laughter and things, uh, comes in, it just dissolves these momentary contracts. And what is external and invulnerable grows substantially within us. So laughter, joy, love, externally, uh, External and invulnerable, it grows. The antitoxin to fear is a thorough examination of the subject of death. You hear, we hear this all the time that our actual only fear is of death. So, immortality made visible behind death's horrifying skull. So, we want to work on that. If we are having if it's unconscious that we have a fear of death, because I think many people do, that's why if you were really in your body, a lot of times you would be able to acknowledge that and say, yeah, I don't really understand. I don't, we're all searching for what goes on after death. And I do think as we go through life and we do our work, we do come into this place where we do have this knowing of what's going to happen when we get past. But there's also, as there are many universes, there are going to be a lot of interesting, un- um, unimaginable events and then some of us have had these really amazing near-death experiences which have given us garnered us wisdom and courage and um, knowing that our purpose here is really important that we have to do our work here to help ourselves and help others um, but let's if you're having a fear in that we're I'll look into things and we'll see what else we can talk about with the fear of death I would like to just say to you don't fear death but that's like putting a band-aid over an abscess i'm not going to do that to you i would just like to ask you to sit with god sit with the universe sit with spirit the way that you know to and ask that question about you know dropping the fear of death so you can die before you're dead and live the antidote for jealousy possessiveness and anxiety fixation is consciousness raising analysis correct psychic surgery executed with merciless honesty that sheds light upon the true nature of our attachment. Oh, it's another good one. The antidote for jealousy, possessiveness, and anxiety fixation is consciousness, okay? Which is what we're doing here, which is what we're doing on Brian Scott's channel, Renee Garcia's um, Reality Transurfing, Elmer Orlocker, uh, Neville Goddard's work, Josiah Bryant, Joseph Ally, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Buddha, all of them were encouraging us to, to do this deeper analysis of our consciousness. And we want to do this correct psychic surgery. Just imagine that. We're just plucking out gently what, you know, what programs don't work. And we're exec we have to do this. If we're going to do it, we need to execute it with merciless honesty that sheds light upon the true nature of our attachment. Now, guys, I'm going to be really honest with you. Many of us, that's really, really hard. Um, I've heard teachers talk about, like, they get to a point. But I also believe, you know, they say when the student's ready, the teacher will appear. Um, in this circumstance, too, a lot of times you have to do a lot of personal inner work outer work so you can get to that point where you're brave enough to face yourself but once you do and you do it with merciless honesty so you can even see how you played into something and if there's a place where maybe you were a child and you should have been protected make peace with that 
but it sheds night, light on our true attachments, our true nature of our attachments. So I encourage you in this again, because we're all on this path and it's going to be beautiful. So of course we should make no mistake. Those who have inflicted deep, well, here it is. Those who have inflicted deep, slow healing wounds through many long years of self-torture need time for the fester to clear and heal. So guys, you're always going to hear me say this. Never, ever, 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 never give up. You look at someone else around you and you think, wow, they're so great. They have it so great, this and that. Don't, if, if you're going to look to someone for the script for an upgrade, great. But if you're going to look to compare them to further harm yourself, to further put yourself in a box, all in all, no, 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 do not do that. You need to look at what you need to look at to make the upgrade. No more torturing yourself. No more putting yourself down. Do what it takes to, to get out. Do what it takes to look around the ashes and pick up the embers so that you can transform into the phoenix. Do not, you know, be gentle with yourself, but at the same time, don't play. Come to win. Because when you win, all humanity wins with you. So being, because perfect therapy, as we have discussed previously, is not healing acute neglected diseases, but rather prevention. Prevention, on the other hand, requires knowledge that recognizes potential future developments when they first sprout. And that's the whole beauty about this. As we get more real with ourselves, when we dig into our shadow side, we dig into our light side, and we begin to merge as one to come forward and do the gift that we came to give, we begin to see... We begin to see in the future, like when something's about to sprout, sprout, and we're like, "Oh, we did that jealousy thing. Oh, we did that possessive thing. Oh, we did that anxiety thing. Mm, uh, mm, mm, mm. No, uh, ole, no, I'm not going back there." So that's the beauty of this work. It can empower you today, tomorrow, and forever. And for many of you who are connected to others, which pretty much is all of us. So let's say you're a mother. It'll help your children. It'll help your grandchildren. It'll help every descendant after you. It'll help your parents. It'll help your siblings. Because even when people die, this stuff is still going on in the spirit realm. So you are worth it. You matter. And I just want to thank you so much for joining me today. And I just know you're wonderful. When you do get a chance, please hit subscribe and like. And please keep looking around for the magic of everyday life. Because it's everywhere. All right, remember now, peace in, peace out.